All right, welcome back to uh, Art for OUR. Our channel's been picking up speed lately. We hit the 10,000 subscriber mark, which I honestly never thought we'd hit. I remember um, just starting out and getting to 1,000 seemed like it took two eternities. So to hit 10,000 blows my mind. Thank you for support and subscriptions, and um, hopefully make it worth your while. This is a chunk of cherry wood that a patient of mine donated. Uh, he called me up one day and said, Hey, I got a whole bunch of stuff. I notice you're making things out of wood, and I've got a cherry tree. And I said, I'll take it. This wood's usually quite beautiful. So he dropped a bunch off in my parking lot. And the things your foot doctor and you might discuss, you never know. <laughs> this thing had some, whoever cut it, kind of cut it at a weird angle and there was some deep gouges and I thought, you know what? What if the top of the vase had a big steep angle? It'd be a different different uh, approach. I knew it was going to be a pain to turn. I've done a, a number of bowls and vases that have big wings on them and it's like having a helicopter propeller coming for your fingers, but um, one wing, which is essentially what this is, is a little off center, so you have to go a little slower and be careful, but it turned out pretty cool. So I'm back to my um, tree fetish. <laughs> I love trees. I love making them in art forms. Um, so I designed out uh, a scene with a tree in it. I'm, I'm getting to the point where what I want to see at the end of my project is a scene that uh, encourages your your uh, memory, your imagination to take off and kind of starts a story in your mind. I don't want them too complex, a little abstract. Um, if you look at my project called the crystal tree, your mind goes all kinds of places with that. Just kind of this out of, out of this world scene. I'm using a bunch of different tools on this hollowing out portion. This grinder with cutting bits is by far the best tool. Obviously you gotta be very careful with these, but it just removes the most wood the quickest. I'm also using a file sander there by Wen, W-E-N, and um, a roto zip, um, as well as a um, couple of other tools, a router with a cutting bit on it. All of those are pretty useful. I'm still looking out there for the ultimate carving tool. Um, but when I'm in a hurry and I want to move a lot of volume, the grinder seems to win. Even though it's the middle of summer, I'm wearing long sleeve shirt because that sucker spits off wood so strongly it'll it'll rip your skin apart. So it's like getting sandblasted. So I'm always wearing long sleeves, which kind of sucks in the heat, but necessary evil. In my uh, quest to create the perfect tree scene, uh, I've given up trying to find a branch that looked like a miniature tree. <laughs> Maybe I need to go buy a bonsai tree or something and just strip it down, but I just took this branch and repositioned the little twigs on it, and I thought it looked a little more realistic. Um, none of my projects ever turn out as expected, and there was a big thing that went wrong here so i got it all together spray painted it everything's hunky dory i wanted a nice black tree kind of a fall autumn tree look and as i'm putting it into my my window here in my vase you know you always have to trim things out and reposition it and glue it into place when i'm using super glue um Especially, well, almost any super glue you, you can get your hands on these days. They have a, a quick fix. Um, it's a, a hardener. And I didn't really do the chemistry on this one. Apparently, that hardener uh, interacts with spray paint. And everything looked fine until I poured the resin. And you'll see this black paint start to come off. So... In the end, it actually turned out looking cool. Kind of a tree in the mist, tree in the night kind of a thing. I often end up naming my projects so I can keep them straight for one thing because I've done so many of them. But I name them after the fact more often than not just based on what it turns out to be. And maybe that's just me discovering how to do things and not knowing what's, what's going to come. But it's kind of fun to sit back in the end and be like, well... Here's what it looks like, despite what I had intended initially, and that's that's kind of a fun thing. 
Uh, this is tuck tape. Um, it doesn't stick to resin a lot, and I've been trying to protect my tenons so I don't have to remake them. Lining it up on the lathe after you've started is incredibly important. If you're off just a little bit, you lose the centeredness of the project. And if you're doing a window like this, you're going to lose everything. So it's important to keep that tenon in place and protect it. And tuck tape's worked out pretty well. Uh, this was project was too big to go in my pressure pot. And I wanted to add some things, um, some embellishments on top. In all honesty, what I was shooting for initially was a burning bush. We're talking biblical Moses stuff. And unfortunately, when I got to the part of uh, injecting a little bit of uh, colored resin around the tree, three-fourths of it had hardened. I can't remember what happened, but I uh, slept in, <laughs> missed, missed the window opportunity. You got to get to it right when it's hardening and it's thick as molasses, but not too hard, not too thin. Otherwise, this the, the colors you add will just run and dissipate perfectly out. Uh, so I got some on the top. It wasn't as uh, involved as I'd hoped. Uh, but in the end, it kind of looked like fall leaves. So it's kind of an abstract fall-looking tree in the night. So uh, Fall Night is the name of it, and that's, that's how that came to be. Uh, this project was too, too big to fit in my pressure pot, so I went back to my technique of uh, using a floor padding foam, that's that orange stuff, uh, burying it in a box of sand, and pouring it worked out pretty well. You'll notice there I stuck it on a vibration plate, my, my resin, trying to get the bubbles out. I put it on there for at least 30 to 45 minutes, and I could not appreciate a significant improvement, so... I think a vibration does help get some bubbles out, but I was pretty dissatisfied with it. Um, and this stuff was so hard by the time I got to it that uh, I ended up making a mess of it. I couldn't get any further in than I was. So got a few little abstract leaves on the top of my tree. That was what it ended up being. I'm going to revisit this again because I didn't quite get the vision I wanted of a tree on fire. <laughs> so... I'm going to try this again, I think, on the next project. I've still got the interest to do it. I really like this um, approach of burying the project in a pot of sand or a box of sand wrapped in this floor padding. Um, you don't have to worry about leaks when you do this. If it leaks a little bit, it goes into the sand and there's an immediate block. So I've had a couple of leaks where you poke through a little bit and it doesn't, you don't lose much resin at all. It gums it up and it stops leaking almost immediately. So that's fantastic. Of course, the sand's reusable, the box reusable, and I don't spend a whole lot of time taping plastic to my project or whatever, trying to prevent leaks. And boy, I've had several projects where if there's a tiny drip using this fathom or, or similar resin that takes several days to set, Boy, one little drip adds up to a whole lot of lost resin and a lot of money on the ground. So this technique's fail-proof. If it's a project you can't get and the pressure pot's too big, um, I've really liked it. You can kind of control everything, and it's super cheap. The foam padding is like nothing, you know, 20 30 bucks for a huge roll of it. lasts for many projects, so I've, I've really liked that. I ordered a mm -hmm. vacuum chamber. I thought I was hoping the vibration thing would take care of stuff, but uh, of the bubbles, but it hasn't really done what I wanted. So I've got a vacuum chamber coming. I know it foams like crazy when you do that, but I'm going to try to figure out a way of getting the bubbles out for these projects uh, that you can't get in a pressure pot. If if I can do a pressure pot, the total boat fathom resin takes several days to set up. Most bubbles come to the surface that saturate your wood without any issues. And in a pressure pot, that stuff is almost crystal clear. So I'm really happy with that. But when I'm doing this delayed resin manipulation, I have to be able to get to it. And often the projects are just too big to, to fit in a pot. So either I need a bigger pressure pot, which, I don't know, I would need like a 100 gallon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It would have to be really big. I've got a 5 gallon right now. And it's There's no way this is going in there. Um, so, we'll tell you about doing a vacuum chamber before applying it to the, the before applying the resin to the project. Hopefully, on the next one, and uh, my quest for a bubble-free 
clear resin continues for the crazy stuff I'm trying to do. My projects are always sold at artforour.org. That's a website we've set up for artists of all kinds and types to set their projects up. They can be sold anywhere from 50 to 100% of the profit to be donated to, to Operation Underground Railroad. Uh, those guys are the, the guys who go around the world with jump teams and that uh, finding kids who are stuck in uh, trafficking, sex trafficking rings. Uh, they free them, find them, free them, and uh, help put them in better homes, better situations, um, which is a tricky, expensive process. But I can't think of a better place to put my energy and time. And uh, for me, I love doing this stuff for the challenge of trying out new artistic techniques and new things and trying to create what I'm seeing in my mind, which is hard, but uh, uh, I've been blessed in my life with a good job, stable income, and um, I love raising money for Operation Underground Railroad. I figure we all have so much in our lives, uh, we can give some back. I, I find myself in a fortunate position where I can give back and I'm happy to do it. Here's a learning thing. Uh, when you're this far into a project, don't use a chainsaw. <laughs> I, I, I didn't have anything to cut such a big deal. I don't have a bandsaw. That's that's my next big purchase. And I thought, oh, I'll just whack the end off this, get it at the angle I want. And of course, I forgot about how rough that can be, at least with the type of blade I've got on mine. So chewed up the end pretty badly. I had to repair it. You'll see the repair in the, it, towards the end of the sh of the. Uh, video here but it turned out okay in the end by the time i was done sanding you could hardly see it but yeah lesson learned i should have should have get a i gotta get a bandsaw at some point it's just a matter of time but there you are this is a forzner bit uh, i like drilling the center out of these and then i've got the simple hollowing tool this is a red mechanical arm when you're cutting on the lathe if you're new to this past time or you're just learning about it you want the tip of your tool right off of that tool rest the black rest there if you extend past it which you have to do when you've got a really deep bowl and this was over a foot deep um, things get really dangerous and really unstable so this mechanical arm holds on to my tool for me and all i have to do is direct it it's a little slower it's a little cumbersome but this simple hollowing tool is fantastic um, I've mean, had it for a number of projects now, and I, I love it. There's a link to it to the um, Amazon place where you can buy it in my my video here. It's a great great tool to have. Uh, you'll see it on our. Uh, description of the video a bunch of links you can shop on amazon uh, there's a percentage of the of the cells that goes to operation underground railroad i don't keep anything so whatever commissions i get i send on to them um, there's links to the different products i use different tools there's a link to the fundraiser that's directly at oer for for me all of the artists and all of the revenue streams that we've developed go through that fundraiser <clears throat> With the exception of some of the uh, projects that we have donated to different auctions, which have happened around where I live here in Utah. And so you can't see the total there because some of it has gone through other other situ uh, other uh, events. But altogether, we've raised over tw just over 25,000 um, bucks. So thank you to your generosity. Some of you have donated directly to that fundraiser, which is amazing. Um, some of you have subscribed to this channel, which you can sign up to for a couple of bucks a month or more. Um, I, I always make the promise that everything that comes to me, I send right on to Operation Underground Railroad. That, that's my promise. So thank you so much for your support. We've got some big events coming up. If you're an artist or a painter or whatever, we would love your donations. Uh, if you have a friend or family member that does it, uh, we've sold a lot of stuff. Um, sometimes it doesn't move for a while until a show happens and then we sell a lot all at once. Um, so you just have to be patient with that. But um, 
yeah, we could use your support. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, world's in a lot of hurt right now, so find a way to serve. Find a way to make somebody's day lighten up. That's kind of where we're at. I've kind of given up arguing with people about politics and religion. This kind of works. The only thing we all agree on, is, it would seem. <laughs> so, anyway, have a great day. We'll, we'll see you on the next project.